Hi there! In today's video, we will be taking a look at how we can use the built-in events of the Phaser 3 library to allow us to drag game objects around in our game. The Phaser 3 library provides many built-in events for handling input in your game, both at your scene and game object level. By using the events that are tied to our game objects, we can listen for a pointer events on a single object and move that game object in response to those events. Uh, so as an example here, well, we have a very simple Phaser 3 scene and a rectangle game object. And by making use of our pointer down and up events, as well as the pointer move event, we can update our game object's position in relation to those events that we're receiving from Phaser. If you are interested in following along with the code in this video, there's going to be a link in the description of this video to a starter code template uh, that has a very basic Phaser 3 scene with some minor game objects added to it as a starting point. If you are interested in following along, please go ahead and download that code now and extract that and open it into your ID of choice. All right, so in the starter code template, it's just going to be a few files. Uh, primarily, the main one is going to be our index.html page. So this is our main web page that has our Phaser 3 game. Uh, this just references the Phaser 3 library from the CDN, and it also contains uh, a reference to our main.js file. And inside our main.js file, uh, we just have a basic Phaser 3 game configuration uh, with the dimensions of our canvas, uh, some simple scaling, and then we have a very basic scene where we create our rectangle game object. Uh, so a very simple game object that's a yellow rectangle. And then we just render out a simple text game object with some text to uh, provide context for this demo. Uh, so if we go ahead and launch this in your web server, uh, what we should see here is a very basic scene uh, with our yellow rectangle and our text game object and nothing else happens in our game. Alright, so before we dive into our code, we're going to walk through at a high level of the approach we're going to take so we can actually make our game objects be draggable in our scene. So the first thing we need to do with our game objects is we need to inform our input manager that we want to enable input for a particular game object. Um, so by default, your game objects in phaser, uh, we won't be able to listen for events at the game object level unless we tell our input manager that we want to enable that. And to do this, typically we just call the set interactive method on a game object. And under the hood, the phaser3 library is going to have that game object to form the input manager that we want to now listen for events. Once we do that, we can then use our typical uh, event listener strategy of using the on method or event listener to register an event we want to listen for. And so this is where we're going to provide our input events. So like our pointer up, our pointer down, and our pointer move event. And when those fire, we can provide a callback. And so then that way when the event triggers, our event listener is going to call the callback we've registered. And then we can do logic to update our game object. And so to go ahead and do all of this, what we're going to do is we're just going to make a utility function to make a game object draggable. And so what we're going to do is in our code, let's go ahead and make a new file. And we're just going to call this draggable.js. And inside here, we're just going to export out a new function. And we're going to call it make draggable. And so for our function, we're going to expect um, two parameters. Uh, the first one is going to be our phaser 3 game object uh, that we want to uh, enable event handling for. And our second one is just going to be a optional value. We'll have a default value. We're just going to call this enable logs and we're going to set it equal to false. And what this parameter is going to be used for is as we add in our functionality here, we're going to add some console log statements. So then that way uh, we can see what's happening. Uh, but because we want this to be reusable, we don't want to be uh, polluting all of our console log statements uh, with uh, stuff from this utility function. And so we can enable this when we want for a particular game object, and then by default, it, it won't run. So after we call our make draggable function, the first thing we'll want to do on our game object is we need to call that set interactive method. And so what we do is we'll do game object, we're going to call set interactive. And now that's going to let, let us register our event listeners uh, for our pointer events. And so to go ahead and listen for our first event, we're going to do pointer down. And so what we'll do is we'll do game object and we're going to use the on method to register our event listener. And now we need to provide our event. So our event is going to be phaser input events. And then it's going to go ahead and be pointer down. And then we can go ahead and provide our callback function that we like to invoke. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference a new function that we've not created yet. And we're just going to call this start drag. 
And so then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and define that function. And we're going to define that function within the scope of our make draggable function. And so what we'll do is we'll do start drag. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to encapsulate it within our make draggable function scope. And then that way, anytime this callback runs, we know within what game object scope that this is currently running. And then that way, we can use this function on multiple game objects, and this will be all encapsulated within the particular game object that we're currently interacting with. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and make a log statement to say, hey, we've started, uh, this method was invoked, basically. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to make another function. We're going to call this log. And inside here, this is where we're going to go ahead and do our console log. And we're going to go ahead and console log out our message. And instead of just doing council log, let's go ahead and we're going to set this actually at the debug level. And so we'll need to pass in our message um, as a parameter. And then what we'll do is we're just going to add an if statement. So we'll say if enable logs is true, then we're going to go ahead and do our council debug. Otherwise, we wouldn't actually log it to our council. And then with our start drag, what we can do is reference our log function, and now we can provide our message. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to do a pattern like this where we use our function name, draggable, and then we provide our method name that the log is tied to. So we'll say start drag. And now what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and just say invoked for game object. And we're going to go ahead and reference our game object name property. Uh, so by default, uh, Phaser has a property name on your game objects uh, that we can use as a developer to uh, provide a unique, unique name for this game object. Um, it's empty by default, and Phaser is never going to populate it, and it's meant for us to use. And so it'll be helpful for debug, debugging purposes if we need to know what object we're currently interacting with. All right, so if we go ahead and save, let's jump back over to our main.js file and let's go ahead and call our new function and we'll pass in our rectangle game object and we're going to go ahead and pass in true so we can log out our uh, log lines. And so if we come back to our scene uh, in our browser, let's go ahead and open up our developer console. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to check my log levels and we're going to make sure verbose is uh, uh, checked. Otherwise, what will happen is when you click on your game object, uh, we won't actually see those log lines because it's at the debug level. And so what we'll see now is if we click on our scene, nothing happens, which is what we expect. But if we click on our game object, we see our log line is now firing. And so what we can see is that our first event list we registered for pointer down is working how we expect. And so now what we need to do is we need to add our event listers for our pointer up and then our pointer move events. Uh, basically, pointer up is going to fire when our mouse is released, and then pointer move is going to fire for when we move our cursor uh, in our game. So if we come back to our code, what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this. Let's go ahead and paste it two more times, and we're just going to make two new functions. And so we're going to go ahead and do our pointer up event. And for that, we're going to make a new function. We're going to call this stop drag. And we'll go ahead and just update our log line. And for pointer up, we'll reference stop drag. And then for pointer down, uh, what we'll do is we're going to reference a new function. We'll call this on drag. So we're going to go ahead and copy this, go ahead and paste it. And let's go ahead and call this on drag. And we'll update our function, our name here. And let's go ahead and reference that here. All right. And then what we'll do is we just need to change this from pointer down to pointer move. All right, so we're going to go ahead and test our changes. If we move our mouse in our scene or click, nothing happens. But as soon as we move over our game object, we see a new log line firing. What's happening is we've, regi we've registered an event listener for pointer move on our game object. So anytime our cursor moves over our game object, it's going to invoke this callback. Likewise, when we click, we get our first callback uh, for when we point our pointer down. And if we let go of the mouse, we'll see um, our stop drag. So our callback for our pointer up is invoked. All right, so now that we have our base uh, event listeners working and we see our callbacks being invoked, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna listen for when our mouse is over our game object. We're gonna go ahead and update our game object's position to match our cursor's uh, game object position. And so to do this, when we receive our callback uh, for our pointer move, one of the things we receive is a phaser uh, input. 
pointer. And basically this pointer has a bunch of data based on our cur uh, cursor's current position in our game. And uh, our main properties we care about right now is our X and Y values on our pointer. So every time this moves, we get that pointer and we'll have an X and Y of where it's at in our scene. And so based on that, what we can do is we can update our game object's X value to go ahead and be equal to our pointer.x value. And then likewise, we can also do the same thing with our Y value. So then, so to go ahead and test this, what we'll do is we'll come to our scene. And now as soon as we put our cursor over our game object, it attaches to it. And then basically, as we move our cursor throughout our scene, we can see that the game object follows our cursor. And the only way to get this to turn off is if we leave our canvas element, so we actually leave our game, then we stop following our cursor. But the moment we go back over it, it starts updating again. So now to complete our draggable uh, functionality, what we really want to do is we don't want to start dragging our game object until our player clicks down on our game object. Once they do that, then when they're holding their mouse, we want to go ahead and move the game object around based on where they're dragging it. And once they release the mouse, then we'd want to stop uh, updating our game object. And so to do this, what we can do is in our callbacks for our start, drag, and stop drag methods, this is when we can turn on and off our various event listeners. So we only listen for events when we, exp when we need to take action. And so what we're going to do is in our start drag method, uh, we're going to go ahead and move our logic for listening for a pointer up and our pointer move to only be invoked once this happens. So if we copy uh, these two lines of code here, let's go ahead and paste them in here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy this one. But what we're going to do is we're going to turn off our event listener for our start drag. And so to do that, we're going to use the off method. And what this will do is if you provide the same event and the same uh, context for your callback function that you initially provided, this is going to turn off that event listener and it should no longer be invoked until we turn it back on. And so if we remove these from the bottom of our function, if we go ahead and save, now what will happen is if we hover over our game object, we no longer have any council log statements, but the moment we click, now our event listeners are being invoked for our pointer up and our pointer move. But one thing you'll notice is every time we click, we no longer invoke our start drag uh, function. So then to go ahead and complete the loop, what we want to do is in our stop drag function, we basically want to do the inverse of what we did here. And so once the player releases their mouse, we want to go ahead and turn off our event listener for pointer up and pointer move, but then turn on our event listener uh, for our uh, pointer down. So what we're going to go ahead and do is let's copy these three lines of code. We'll come up to stop drag. Let's go ahead and paste them. And we're just going to go ahead and change these to be on. And then we'll do off uh, for our other two. So then what will happen is back in our scene, uh, if we go ahead and move over our game object, nothing happens. We click. We can now click and drag our game object around our scene. And then finally, if we let go of the mouse, our game object stops moving. All right, so uh, just a quick recap of what we did here is basically we've made a new function uh, where we provide our phaser three game object. And for our game object, we just call our set interactive method to allow us to interact with our game object. And then we provide an event listener for pointer down. And your pointer down event is only going to fire uh, when you click and touch down on your game object. And once we do that, we invoke our callback function. And inside our callback function, we go ahead and turn on some of our additional event listeners. And this tied to the pointer up and pointer move. And so basically pointer up is once you let go of your game objects and release the mouse. And then pointer move is just when your mouse, your cursor, is moving over that game object. And by using these events and just uh, using that pointer property, we can easily have our game object follow our cursor in our game. All right, so one last thing we're going to do for our demo is uh, we're going to go ahead and listen for our destroy event on our game object. And we're going to use that to do some cleanup on our event listeners. And so generally in Phaser, it's best practice to clean up your event listeners anytime you uh, no longer need them. So when our game object's destroyed or our scene's destroyed, uh, we want to remove these event listeners. So then that way they're just not taking up uh, memory. 
Uh, so to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to do our game object. We're going to do on, and now we're going to go ahead and listen to our phaser game objects. And then we're going to do events. And on our events, we want to listen to our destroy event. And basically, this event's going to be fired anytime our game object is being destroyed. Uh, so like when our scene shuts down, phaser's going to destroy our game object. If we were uh, designing a game like maybe asteroids or uh, space invaders, when our bullets would hit an asteroid or an alien, uh, we'd want to clean up that game object so we could call the destroy method to remove it from our game. Um, so anytime that we, uh, we want to do cleanup, this event will be emitted uh, by phaser. And so what we'll do is we're going to reference a new uh, function. Uh, we'll just call it destroy. And then what we'll do is we're just going to do function. We're going to do destroy. And we're just going to do uh, turn off all of our event listeners. So I'm just going to copy these lines of code here. We're going to go ahead and paste it. And we'll just make sure we set them all to off. And finally, we're just going to copy our log statement. And we're just going to call uh, destroy for our function name. So if we wanted to go ahead and see this work, uh, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll come back to our main.js file. After we create our text game object, we're just going to use set timeout uh, to go ahead and run some code. And we're going to go ahead and set this for, we'll just say three seconds. Uh, so we'll do 3000 milliseconds. And I'm going to restart our phaser scene. So we're going to do this scene.restart. And what we're going to do is we're also going to add a name to our rectangle game object. So we'll do rectangle.name, and we're going to set it equal to test. So then what should happen is uh, after our scene refreshes, after three seconds, we should see our destroy function being called. And so what's happening is anytime we restart our phaser scene or we transition to a new scene, our current scene is going to get cleaned up and destroyed. And what phaser is going to do is any game objects in those scene, it's going to emit an event to uh, destroy those game objects. And it's going to start doing cleanup. And by listening for that destroy event, we can have our own custom cleanup logic to remove our event listeners. And so that's what we see happening here. Uh, then finally, because we set that name property on our game object, now in our log lines, we actually see that name being logged. All right, and with that, that actually brings an end to this video. Uh, so as a reminder, there is a link in the description of this video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please send links on your screen now.